Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Bergeron Briefs. For those of you who haven't seen this show, my name is Arthur Bergeron. I'm an elder law attorney. I work at uh, Myrick O'Connell. There are 60 of us at Myrick O'Connell, so everyone specializes in something. I do this. Uh, and as many of you know, I also do presentations regarding elder law issues at the Senior Center. And then to supplement that, uh, several years ago I started doing this program, Bergeron Briefs, to help you know, understand as a senior or a person who works with seniors, um, who the people are that you need to know here in Marlboro and what the programs are. And two of those people that you need to know now are Ellen Santos and Kathy Fadul, who are both with me here today. Thank you very much, Ellen, for coming. Thank you, Great. Kathy, for coming. Thanks for having and, us. And you folks are both at Assabet School, right. right, doing various things. So what I'd like you to start off by doing, is, is, as I mentioned to you earlier, is mm -hmm. just kind of tell me, first of all, how you ended up there, and then I'm going to ask you each that, and then we're just going to talk about some of the programs that are happening there, which are really, really exciting and that people should know about. Ellen. I'm the director of practical nursing at Aspet Valley. It's mm -hmm. a postgraduate uh, program. You have to be a high school graduate to uh, become a nurse. Yep. I have been there for 25 years. I started as a clinical instructor. And is that an LP? Is that L it's licensed practical nursing? Yes. I would. I always wanted this distinction. You know, so that's an LPN. Okay. Yes. And uh, in Massachusetts, it's the quickest entry into the nursing workforce that you can have. You mm -hmm. can do it in 1,080 hours, and we're mm -hmm. 1,085 hours. So we uh, have a quick turnaround time for our nurses. Um, so I started as a, as a faculty, and yeah. uh, I've been the director uh, since 2011. And I love my job, and I love our program. Does, and, and, and how many nurses, <coughs> how many students do you have typically? Uh, we started with with 40, and yeah. uh, we're doing, a, I mean, with 50, I'm sorry, we have 50 this year. And we're doing a pretty good job of keeping yeah. them. We try yeah. really hard to uh, help everybody get to the point of graduation. So we yeah. have good retention of our students. And it's important for people to know that it's a really good market for LPN workforce A really today. good market. Maybe really we can good. even talk about that a little bit more a little, a little bit later on. And Kathy, so what are you doing at ASAP? So I have been at Aspid for about five years now. Yeah. I actually started working for <laughs> Ellen, <coughs> excuse me, in the LPN department, and then I moved over to Health Technologies, which is the high school students. So it's very, very exciting what the high school students are doing. It's, uh, they come in, they can, um, when they graduate, they're certified nursing assistants. Yeah. We go out, we work. CNA. A CNA, CNAs, right. right. And we go out, we work with um, residents in long-term care facilities and we work in, with the community they, um, they they do a great great job many of our students go on to nursing school physical therapy physician assistant I see. it's wide open that's great mm -hmm. that's great. and how many people are, are, are in your program so we have let's see close to a hundred yes a hundred students through the four years Yep, yep. So mm -hmm. that's a lot. It that's is a, a lot. That, yeah, that's a it's lot. It's one of the of most folks. popular programs at Asabet. And, and so, in the course of all of that, mm -hmm. um, uh, I think Ellen, it would start with with you that you got interested in this 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 dementia friendly communities notion. Can you just kind of talk about that and talk about how you get interested, and then maybe the two of you can just kind of talk about where that's gone at Asabet School because it's been an amazing thing. I think what you're doing. Um, is, is not being done anyplace else in the Commonwealth, and it's just a wonderful thing. Right? We're, we're, so. we're pretty excited about it. Uh, the way that it started was um, we had partnered with the Marlboro Senior Center to do a program for them. There was a, a mental health wellness program that we worked with uh, Kathy Murphy, who's director of volunteers, mm -hmm. and uh, myself and my students put together a day-long project for seniors to come in and learn a few things. We really want to partner with the community. It's very important that our nurses really understand the community that they serve. Yeah. And, and by, the way, by the way, parenthetically, do many of your nurses, after they finish the program, stay in this area? Most of them do. Most of them do. And if, you, if you go to a doctor's office or a clinic in this area, you will run into Assabet Valley graduates. So, yes. So we started our partnership with the Senior Center, and then I heard about this, and in some conversations with Trish Pope and Ginger Ryan, um, kind of explored uh, how this could go back and work for my 
for my students. So yeah. I think that um, what's really exciting about it is that it's such a good fit between our program and what the needs of the come to be dementia friendly community is trying to do. And, and, and maybe kind of, I'll just kind of put this in parentheses because I know Trisha has been here mm -hmm. um, on the show and Ginger Ryan has been here. We've kind of talked mm -hmm. about this, this, this notion that of trying to figure out how the city itself can be dementia friendly and what that means in terms of having, among other things, folks who are interacting with seniors who may have those symptoms understand them and understand how to deal with them, right? So it's in that kind of context. So right. you're saying this, that's, that was it. Right? Well, so thinking about, you know, my students are, um, most of them very dedicated to working with senior citizens. They have worked, a lot of them as CNAs mm -hmm. before they came to our program, and many of yeah. them want to stay in that kind of environment. But on further thinking about it and talking about it, um, ASABET is an amazing school. Mm -hmm. And we do a lot of things with the community. We have a wonderful restaurant, the Epicurean Room, and you know, being open during the day, senior citizens uh, of, of the community yep. attend That's frequent. That's a popular stop. It's a very popular mm -hmm. stop. They do a great job. And we also have a cosmetology program where you can come in and, and get, your, get your hair done. And again, we serve a lot of, a lot of senior citizens. So thinking about, you know, well, we also have um, two areas of, of expertise with my students are trained to, uh, they've been done a certificate program with the Alzheimer's um, organization. And the Alzheimer's Association. Yeah. Alzheimer's mm -hmm. Association. And then I started thinking about Kathy's program because it, we, we love to partner with the high school students that that high school group is you know they're they're so um, they're so professional. They're so mature. I love working with them. So I started talking to Kathy, and she decided to join me. Yes. So I'll let you talk about your group. So my students um, have a 12-hour habilitation training through the Alzheimer's Association. Habilitation <clears throat> training. It's called habilitation training. Can you just talk about that a little? Absolutely. Bit? It's this great training where you look at the person who has a dementia-related disease and you are trying to make the environment fit better to them instead of them fitting to the environment. So the way you approach that. Well, that's them, a great way of putting it. That's a great way of putting it. it. And that's yeah. what it's all about. It's looking at the person and what, how can we make their day better? So instead of um, getting them to um, conform to what we're doing, we're yeah. changing what we're doing to make it better for them. The way we approach them, what the environment is, the activities that we have for them, the way we communicate with them. Can, we, can you kind of talk about some examples of that? Because you know, obviously you're dealing with that all the time. Because um, I bet you're kind of looking at kind of different scenarios. And things absolutely, that are, right. yeah, we do deal with this all the time. Yeah. So for example, um, one of the things we're gonna talk about with our painting and design um, shop is that the way the environment is, is really important for people with Alzheimer's. If they have things that are all one color, it's harder for them to differentiate it. They have different. They have difficulties with depth, depth, depth perception. Excuse me. So for them to walk down steps, it's hard for them. So painting and design with their interior decorating piece can look at this and say, how would we design this for someone who has these difficulties? Because you actually have an <laughs> interior design yes, program portion. within ASABA. Right. Exactly. I see. I see. So you could end up with a, with a kind of specialized some specialized skills, Absolutely. really just attuned to seniors who are, especially seniors who are trying who want to live at home. Absolutely. That's everybody's goal. Everybody wants to stay at home. Right? And I think the biggest thing is is that people have to understand it's a brain based disease. It is not the person trying to be manipulative. If they're asking you that question for the third or fourth time, to them it's the first time they're asking that question. So how you respond to that is mm -hmm. going to make a big difference to them. Mm -hmm. And if you respond in a way that you're, you know, I've already told you that, we've already gone over this, they don't remember it. So it's, it's important to remember the person there. So it goes back to that, that point of adapting, our, uh, adapting the environment to them as opposed to expecting them to be able to adapt to the environment. Right. And, and can you give me any other, some other examples of other shops where you think that the, this kind of training would, would really work? Absolutely. Like Ellen said, the Epicurean restaurant 
if someone comes into the restaurant and sees, or any restaurant, and sees a huge menu with a lot of choices, it's going to be hard for someone with Alzheimer's to make a decision. If they have a limited menu, if they don't have as many things on the table, that will be better for them. As many things on the table. Like if um, there's a lot of dishes, a lot of clutter, that's going to be distracting to them. I see. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to get the, the stu the, those students to be aware in that kind of, in that context. Absolutely. Now, and I, and I know you've also got, don't you do, you do hairdressers also, yep. right? So for That must be a real mm -hmm. challenge, because I would assume, well, at least I remember from my mother, right? Mm -hmm. And I know from some, some seniors who I, who I know um, who are older, not men typically, right? Who don't right. have any hair, but for women, that's a, that's a real a tradition that they keep at forever is to be going to the hairdressers and having the hair done. And a lot of times the hairdresser is one of the first people who will notice a change because they see the person every week. So they're not seeing them every day, but they're seeing them weekly. Right. And they can notice those changes that, you know, uh, you forgot how to drive here, you've been coming here every week, that's something that they may want to pick up on. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we would teach our students to how to respond to patients or to residents, to people who um, continually ask the same questions or who are questioning what they're doing or just responses that will um, have them have a better relationship with them, have the experience be a good relationship. I see. Have a good experience. I see. And, and, and what has been the response at the school in terms of their interest mm -hmm. in this? in the program? Well, the response of the school, I'm not surprised, but the response of the school was wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, the first person that we wanted to talk to about it was um, Ernie Houle, our superintendent director. Yep. He was very much in favor. Um, then uh, Russ Mangson, director of vocational programs, uh, booked me at a lead teacher meeting so that I could go in and talk to the, the lead teachers of each of the vocational shops about what we planned on doing. Yeah. And I think that, um, you know, it's such a good fit because we not only have clients coming into our school, but we are also sending tradespeople out to our community. So oh, I didn't know that. I thought, so that, it, I thought if, that all the programs oh, kind of no, came to you. No, so if we well, want you know, I'm out of date. Okay. Right? You know, I stay in my little house. I don't go out, you know? So, so, if, so give, give me some examples. So to do something with our entire school, we want to take our two areas of expertise, the practical nursing program mm -hmm. and the health technology program, we're going to work together to put together some programs that um, we are actually going to be coming up this spring where we'll go into each of the shops and kind of look at their own circumstances. As Kathy said, the Epicurean Room, we have some strategies. I for see. cosmetology, we'll have some strategies. But we're also thinking about what about the carpenters that are going out into people's homes to do repairs? What about the plumbers, the electricians going into people's homes in our community? Uh, if you're in auto tech and you know someone is continuing to, to drive, they're going to bring their cars into you and, and you may get some, some valuable information. Right. So what we want right. to do is, is to uh, have our students who have the expertise share what they know in a strategy-based program where we'll do something that will be kind of quick um, that will help them to understand maybe what's in front of them. Uh, one of the problems is you know when they're going into somebody's home and they're presenting them with a bill if someone has kind of you know gone back in time all bills will be shocking and right. so you know try to give people some strategies on how, the, how they could handle those situations and what is the actual discussion that they're having you know who is it that they're really talking to um, and you know to what, try what and you, get them well to be more sensitive to maybe somebody that you're talking to is really confused and really not aware of what the situation is, right. and right. you but know, probably trying to put on a good face because that's 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 always kind of this tension. You got so many folks who are so embarrassed by the disease, yes. right? And they know that they've got symptoms, and they they but it, they don't want to get taken away. You know, they don't want someone to come in and you know say you got to go to you got to move to a nursing home, and 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 so so that just that interaction is going to be really stressful for those people. Right, and we have to think about, you know, even what are, what is that person's resources? Is there somebody else who could help you with this bill? You know, could we, could we give someone a call? Is there somebody else you could call? Is there, because, you know, people have to 
you know, they have to bill and they have to get their services. Right. Right. But there's a lot of, you know, a lot of stress. And like you say, when people are trying to live their lives at home and we want to support that, you know, simple things, um, Kathy had, had talked about, you know, a simple menu in the epi room, but other things that can happen is, you know, sometimes somebody really can't, they can't make change. They, they need you to do it. So they're always going to use a 20 because they know that they can't. They know they, that that's enough. They know that it's enough and they can't count it out. So just right. kind of understanding that, being honest, being straightforward, um, being helpful everywhere that you can. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, our ASABAC community is always anxious to work with the town. And we are involved with the, with the Marlboro Group, but Northboro and Hudson are also working on this initiative and, and they are part of our, our sending towns. Yep. So yep. we're going to get, we're going to have workers out mm -hmm. in this whole area that we mm -hmm. hope will be, will be sensitive and helpful. And, and I would think what, what's, What's interesting about this is because you have so many different kinds of, of employees that you're training, right. right? That they themselves are going to end up acting as teachers, yes, whether absolutely. it's in, with other interior design yeah. places or with the carpenters that they are now working with, right? right? To, to help them be able, to, it, really to help them spread the word, right? Right, and, under, and understand what the circumstance is when you're when you're faced with this as as Kathy said you know uh, this is not a person trying to give you a hard time this is a person who's having a hard time right and what right. are what are some simple things that we can do to communicate better and to provide support to these people so we had asked that we're we're really excited about being involved with the whole townwide effort and, and, and you said that th that training is actually going to start this spring? Mm -hmm. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, we worked on yeah. uh, my class last year. We worked on surveying the community. Uh, another thing that we, yeah. that we bring to the table is we, I have a very diverse program. Um, we were able to do some surveys with the Dominican community in Marlboro mm -hmm. and the Brazilian community, which is a very important part of our, of our town. And we have, you know, multilingual uh, students and you know we we can be a real asset to this whole group mm -hmm. and, and by the way I remember because we were part of that same committee that was going out and mm -hmm. getting surveys done and bringing them back and you're coming back with the results I, I, I remember you're talking specifically from folks from the Dominican community mm -hmm. and, but and, and I knew you had done some in the Brazilian community also and you were, you were finding some kind of unique reactions there mm -hmm. compared to folks in other communities. Can you just talk about that for a second? Well, I think what we found on the surveys was that um, a lot of those clients were getting huge family support, but feel, feeling very isolated from the rest of the community. They weren't you know, utilizing the senior center, um, very protected in their own families, right. and not necessarily um, again taking advantage of, of what's out there and what's being offered so I think if we can include these groups in our town-wide effort I think it will be you know real benefit to to the whole city yeah, and I suppose just you know once again providing the training for folks who are who are who that's their first language right, right? Mm -hmm. and who are therefore going to be the folks that most likely these old folks are going to be talking to yes so I would assume I remember from my own parents that when they when my mother got older and my mother had some had some real issues toward the end of her life and reverted back to French, and she was mm -hmm. pretty yes. much speak, saying everything mm -hmm. in French. And so you really, you, you that, that's where you're going to be, right. and, and, and to have kids who are aware of that, yes. right, and grandchildren who are aware of that, that in itself is a great thing. And when we talk about, you know, we talk about uh, families, you know, it's very, it's very concerning and upsetting for kids when their grandmother doesn't remember their name anymore, mm -hmm. and just right. a little bit of, um, you know, a little bit of information about. What what does this mean? Uh, I think could be valuable, what you know, above mean? and beyond what your what your trade happens to be and where you happen to be working. And I, and I know you're going to be talking about these things at the public meeting that we're doing <laughs> Saturday, March the fourth. Right. So it's like bleep bleep Saturday, March the fourth, um, uh, in the morning. And I know registration is going to be at eight thirty, and we're going to be doing the program from nine to eleven, mm -hmm. right? And are you folks both going to be doing Kathy, presenting there? Kathy and I will there? be, we'll will be, be co-presenting. Yeah. Um, we are, have a, I have a big meeting with my current class coming up. Mm -hmm. they're, they're volunteering to come in their February vacation and work with me on this program. So hopefully we'll have, uh, we'll have some more specifics when we meet again in March. That's great.
That's great, because I think that, the, once again, the, the real purpose of that meeting is to not only encourage people to come and so we can talk about the, some of the initiatives that are going to be, are happening already in Marlboro, but really to be adding to the pile yes. and finding out what other kinds of things folks would like and what kinds of things they'd like to volunteer it mm -hmm. for. Because I think this is, you know, and I know that you're going to be asked to do this in all these, you have a lot of towns, right? <laughs> but I, I'm glad that you're starting here in Marlboro, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. that you'll be doing that presentation. So thank you very much both for coming. Thank I think you. this was really instructive and I think it's great for folks, you know, whose tax dollars are paying for those schools, <laughs> right? To, to be seeing the interest that the school is taking and the impact that the school can have, which I think is, once again, as a citizen of Marlboro, I think it's just terrific, terrific. Great. So thank you for watching today. If you can, come to that meeting. Uh, it's going to be, once again, it's going to be Saturday, March the 4th. Um, we're opening up for registration at, at 8.30. Uh, it'll run from 9 to 11. There'll be light snacks. There'll be presentations from, from these folks and others regarding the, the first initiatives that are coming out of this whole dementia-friendly communities movement. And we want to hear from you regarding whether you think this is all stupid, you know, or whether you think this is a good idea, and, and, and also what other kinds of things you think we can be doing as a community to make it a place where no matter, even as we get older, no matter how confused we get, we can still live here without shame and get around and get out of our houses and live a happy life, a happy life till the end of our lives. So thank you for watching. Uh, I hope to see you on uh, Saturday, March the 4th. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you in the next installment of Virgil and Thieves. Thank you very much.